Welcome to the Tank Arena series, where we will be comparing various tanks and awarding points in different categories that include firepower, fire control system, protection, survivability and mobility, 100 points maximum for each category, which would make it 500 points in total. And, based on that, we will see which one would be a better tank. Also, we will compose a list and put tanks in place they deserve, and in the end, we will take a look at all the tanks we have compared and sort them from the best to the worst. In this episode, we will be comparing German Leopard 2A7 and Russian T90M. Let's start with firepower. Leopard 2A7 is armed with 120mm L55 gun and can fire DM63 EPFSDS projectile and new DM11 multipurpose ammunition. DM63 is said to have around 760mm penetration 2km and around 370mm at 60 degrees. T90M is armed with 125mm 2A46 M5 gun and can fire 3BM59 Swinets 1 APFSDS which has 370mm at 60 degrees and 2km, which would suggest around 740mm at flat. It can use 3B Key 31 heat with 800mm penetration, a new Telnik multipurpose high explosive projectile. And it is armed with gun launched ATGM which gives it superior range over standard projectiles, which means, in some certain situations, it can outrange most of the tanks. So, the upper 2A7 receives 75 points for firepower, and T90M receives 80 points. That is because, although the M63 is slightly better APFSDS projectile compared to Swinitz 1, the upper 2A7 does not have ability to fire ATGMs, which can be useful in certain situations. The Upper 2A7 Fire Control System received new Attica 3rd generation thermal imaging system for both Gunner and Commander. Attica will replace old 1st generation WBGX thermal imager in the Gunner's MS-15 site, and Commander's Parry 17 will have its 2nd generation thermal replaced with the new Attica thermal. The Fire Control System of T90M consists of Sosna U main gun site, which incorporates Catherine FC 2nd generation thermal imaging system. Hawkeye, Commander's Independent Thermal Viewer, with Catherine XP 3rd Generation Thermal Imaging System. As you can see, the main gun site has inferior thermal imager, but is it really that important? Well, not as much. Commander will be the one looking for targets most of the time, and if Commander spots a tank, Gunner can still engage it, because although it's inferior in recognizing the threat, Catherine FC can still catch the thermal signature of the tank, but it will not be able to recognize it. But still, Gunner can locate the target and engage it. It is also worth noting that Attica is possibly more advanced than Catherine XP, although they are the same generation thermal images, but still, that does not matter as much. Other characteristics of the fire control system are pretty comparable. Based on this, Leopard 2A7 receives 100 points for fire control system, and T90M receives 85 points. Reason is simple. The Upper 2A7 is in the top when it comes to fire control system, together with some other tanks. T90M's gunner site lacks the latest generation of thermal images, and on top of that, the commander's third generation one is not as good as the one of the Upper 2A7. Now we will take a look at the protection. The Upper 2A7 retains the turret protection from the Upper 2A6, which has the same protection as the Upper 2A5. Now, Leopard 2A5 was actually tested against 120mm Sabre projectiles on Swedish tank trials in 1994. That was just before it entered service. The turret armor was rated at 817mm against APFSDS and 1679 mm against heat projectiles. So, according to that, T90M cannot penetrate the turret armor of Leopard 2A7, neither can any ATGM in active service. Not even the famous Cornet. What about the hull? Well, luckily, the Leopard 2 used on Swedish trials had the upgraded hull armor featured on Leopard 2A7, and we can actually see the performance of that armor. Against APFSDS it is rated 670mm and against heat it is rated 1257mm. 
What does that mean? Well, it means T90M can maybe, just maybe, penetrate the hull of Leopard 2A7. It ranges up to 2 kilometers. The sides of the hull are also improved with Anon armor, making it harder to penetrate the tank at certain angles. The tank currently has no active protection system installed on it. What about T90M? Unlike Leopard 2A7, that has no protection improvement on the turret compared to older variants, T90M has new Relic Explosive Reactive Armor, in place of old Contact 5. And Stora Dazzlers have been removed. If you want to know why, check out my video I made specifically on T90M and where I reviewed the tank much more in depth. Which gives much, much better EVA coverage when compared to older T90A variant. But sadly, we don't have actual test results of the armor. But, according to Alexei Klopotov, T90M has 900-950mm on the turret, together with a new relic explosive active armor, which is pretty good, and would make sense, over 800mm of T90A's armor, which had come to 5. There aren't really any estimates for heat protection, nor any estimates for the protection of the hull, but we do have official information from Nii Stali that states the tanks equipped with relics have at least 800mm of protection against APFSDS, including MA2983. Relict does give much better protection against heat than Contact 5 did, including the tandem shaped ones, and according to some sources, it decreases up to 80% of heat penetration, which would make T90M immune to pretty much any ATGM. Protection is even further enhanced with laser warning receivers and infrared smoke discharges which can mask tanks' infrared signature for a short period of time and disrupt the lasing, while also warn the crew from which direction the laser came from. The sights are also protected with latest EREA models on the turret. The hull sights are not yet confirmed to have EREA panels. Now, when it comes to protection, the Upper 2A7 gets 78 points and T90M gets 85 points. The Upper 2A7's protection has not much improved compared to previous variants, Turret is the same as the one from mid 90s, and the upgrade for the hull has been around for a long time, it has just now been mounted in 2A7 as a standard. T90M, on the other hand, received completely new explosive reactive armor, and unlike the upper 2A7, it has laser warning receivers, which gives it extra points. Now, regarding the safety, the upper 2A7 has some issues. In the forward hull compartment, there is an entire ammunition stowage of 27 projectiles, which sits there completely unprotected. Unlike the ready rack at the back of the turret, which is protected with blast doors and blowout panels. Which means, if it gets penetrated in the hull, the entire tank goes to hell. Compared to older Leopard 2 tanks, it has no improvements to the crew safety. T90M does have the same drawback as older T-series, and that is the carousel of the autoloader. But in difference to older tanks, the carousel is now fully protected against any shrapnels, so only a direct hit would ignite the ammunition. Russian studies have discovered that big majority of all catastrophic ammunition detonations occur when extra ammunition inside the turret is hit. So what they did is that they moved that extra ammunition to the safe ammo rack with blowout panels to the back of the turret. The protection is further improved with the presence of Aramid cover that covers the vehicle's interior and is not flammable, and it is supposed to catch fragments that form after the projectile penetrates the armor, further improving the crew's survivability. Leopard 2A7 gets 70 points for survivability and T90M gets 80 points, because of great improvements in crew safety. Now the mobility. Leopard 2 is still powered with MTU MB873 KA501 1500 horsepower diesel engine with maximum 2600 RPM, which can develop maximum torque of 4700 Nm. The biggest problem of the tank is its weight. New armor package on the hull and other stuff increase the weight to 67.5 tons, which would decrease the mobility of the tank. T90M has new 1130 horsepower V92 S2F engine with 2000 maximum RPM and maximum torque of 4521 Nm. The tank weights almost 20 tons less than Leopard 2A7. It weights 48 tons and with the new engine it has excellent mobility. Since the engine is weaker their mobility is very similar, but the 90 m would have some advantages because it weights 20 tons less, mainly because of transportation and crossing bridges. 
but we don't have much information on new automatic transmission mounted on T90M, so it is hard to say which tank has superior mobility. So, both tanks get 85 points in mobility, because they are both very mobile and it is extremely hard to tell which one has better mobility. Now let's take a look at the final score. In Firepower, T90M received 80 points and Leopard 2 received 75. For Fire Control System, T90M received 85 points while Leopard 2A7 received 100 points. For Protection, T90M received 85 points and Leopard 2A7 received 78 points. T90M having enhanced survivability, it gets 80 points while Leopard 2A7 gets 70. In Mobility, both tanks score 85 points. So, in total, T90M gets 415 points, and Leopard 2A7 gets 408 points. As you can see, T90M is barely better than Leopard 2A7, but it is just enough for it to score higher. And that is it. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes. There are plenty more to come. If you like my channel and the content I'm producing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would mean a lot. If you want to chat or just have some questions, Join me in Discord server, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.